Hawaii Volcano Squad is on the air, and this is the uh, Devore Camouflage Tiger Stripe uh, Lecture, for lack of a better word. And we're going to go from this uh, pretty cool looking black rifle to something even better and more practical. And there are the tiger stripes. If you just want to hit pause and drool, go ahead. But I'm going to explain to you how to get from here to there. And I also added in a uh, extra camo technique, uh, which I kind of got from Brent 0331 uh, and mod kind of modified. And here it is. It's uh, I, I couldn't find a braided elastic band, but I did get some desert camo paracord at Ace Hardware for cheap, two bucks and uh, some mossy oak and it is all kind of wrapped up uh, and thanks to Jayhawk uh, I, it, there's a knot in front kind of I tried to do something that he did but it didn't work but it worked fine for this so let's get going and there's the rifle in me and so let's start out with tiger stripes okay you have to make sure first of all when you cut your tiger stripes there's a couple important things you have to do First one is you need to get some junk mail, preferably like one of those credit cards or any offers or anything with like a shiny silver background, maybe like I got one from American Express that I use that was great. And what you need that for is you're going to create these tiger stripe stickers um, out of painter's tape. So you need an X-Acto uh, razor, a painter's tape, and some junk mail with a smooth uh, top and then you cut the junk mail. You cut it, cut it right in half with the exacto knife because that's going to be your peel away sticker backing. Then you cut your tiger stripes in whatever random design you want with an exacto knife. You put it on a piece of cardboard so you don't damage anything. And you know, be careful with the exacto knife. You cut the cut the your tiger stripes, just whatever suits you, whatever pleases you, and stick it where you want. Now, obviously, as you can see here, make sure the barrel is. I, I put a, a cotton. Or I put a Otis patch and I kind of wrapped it around a, just a uh, cotton swab and stuck it in the barrel so I think it in. But you have to cover any place that that uh, all the exhaust ports and any place that anything can get in and mess up your uh, and the inside. You want to keep all the paint on the outside. Obviously, I took out completely took out the firing mechanism from this thing and assembly and I, it's a countdown mag so I covered the numbers on the back and there it is. You need a drop cloth. And then you hit it with Krylon. You go to Ace and get what or wherever and get some Krylon paint that I got like three or four different kinds. And then you give it your first basic coat of tan. And there it is. And so that was you had your first layer of tiger stripes on. And you sprayed the thing pretty good. You may need more than one coat. Um, and I will tell you up front that that thing that. IWI needs to do a better job on that. That back plate that comes on and off, anyway, it, it won't hold paint. So here's, after you finish the, that and it dries, uh, uh, you put on your second layer of tiger stripes. You cut more tiger stripes. That's kind of tedious, by the way. So get, you know, watch a football game and cut, cut. Actually, you better just pay attention now so you don't cut your finger off. <laughs> the exacto knife. And you put tiger stripes on your second coat. And, and so then you then you can just do the next coat will I used uh, the the light green the dark so they have the camouflage nature covers it's like a dark really dark gray green a light green and uh, uh, what the hell else maybe that was it um, and so after you put on I think I added a few more stripes to this but uh, uh, obviously make sure again your trigger and anything that you don't want to get painted. And it is covered and, uh, and put on more stripes and uh, cover up that little slot uh, underneath the, in the front underneath. And so then you go wild with you basically you use um, you don't you just do um, strokes you don't, and you don't cover the whole rifle. Obviously, you just do uh, stay about about a foot away. And spray evenly, uh, and do just strokes across the rifle where you know, and so you can see. I mostly use green and some of the darker gray green or whatever the heck that is. Very dark nature color. And then when you take it off, you'll get tiger stripes. 
after it dries, and then you have to hit it with a matte, fin a clear matte finish. Um, now the back, that backing, IWI, here's a tip, IWI, you need something that holds camo paint. And here's a tip for the IDF, there's my personal view, you, you, you guys put camo on your soldiers, but I guess the rifles cost too much, so you don't want to let in, the, and the soldiers don't own them because they're not allowed to take them home, I guess, or whatever, when they're, they're unless they're active duty or something. But they're not their rifles, and they have to return them in the rifle. You don't you know, put camo on your rifles. You send soldiers out with camo, but their rifles don't have camo. Anyway, here's how it looks when it's done. I mean, you know, why not just send them down the road with Santa Claus, red Santa Claus outfits with a red cap and a white. You have to camo your rifles. And I don't know why. I've only seen IDF with just black rifles, you know, or, or the, you know, just the, the solid color. But this definitely helps break it up, and I'm going to try and get in the jungle at some point just to test the camo on this. But uh, what I also did then was, um, thanks again to Brent0331 and Jayhawk, uh, kind of combined. Uh, I couldn't find a braided elastic, and so what I did was, and when I went to get the Quilon, I saw they had, uh, for two bucks, some uh, uh, paracord that was desert camo. And I just got a, had a mossy oak camo netting, and I cut up swatches. Uh, and so, and I put, to break up the lines of the rifle also. And um, so, basically, the, how, I, how I'm temporarily solving the problem Unless IW actually give, puts a, a back plate, back stock, butt stock on the very end, you know, it comes off and on, you know, and it's really nice that, but it doesn't hold camo paint. Uh, it's it's sticky if you put it on, and I put matte on, and it's still a little sticky. It helps, but it's not going to stay on there. The, the very back plate that you know pivots off and on, and the thing is, if you can't put camo paint on it, what use is it? You know, I mean, it just. <laughs> So what I did was I took some of the mossy oak that I was using for swatches and I kind of wrapped, I, I haven't totally perfected this technique. I kind of used one of Jayhawk, Jayhawk's paracord knots. I tried to do what he was doing with one of his things and it didn't come out right for what he was doing, but I wasn't trying to do that. But it did give me a knot. You wrap the knot around the barrel of the rifle, you know, and then you take one side, one side of the cord, well, you split the cord in half, wrap the knot around the barrel of the rifle, put on your swatches, uh, onto the cord, and then you wrap it around when you kind of maneuver it. I haven't figured out the perfect uh, positioning for all the cords, but when you get to the very end, you take a really big cutout of uh, the mossy oak, and you put it over the end of the rifle. That way, um, if you're eventually, when that stuff comes off on the, on the black barrel, you can still camouflage the end of it. And the, the whole pair, the rifle wrap, is to further break up the lines. So IDF, camel your rifles, not just your soldiers. IWI, get a backplate that buttstock that can hold uh, a camo. Uh, and uh, other than that, you have a great rifle. And uh, I'd like to just do some camo testing out of the jungle, but you can kind of see it's harder. going to be a lot better than just plain black, and it looks cool, of course. And everybody paints your rifle, and I think. Tim at the Military Arms Channel was saying that's like the latest fad. <laughs> Black is out, and uh, well, he, he you can read his his, his uh, bang switch uh, website and then stuff. But uh, I hope everybody likes this, and if you want to do this to one of your rifles or Tabor, if you have any questions, I'll answer them. Uh, painters tape, drop cloth. Tiny bit of paracord and some Krylon paint. The black is the original black from the rifle. Those, I, you know, obviously I put those, that's what I used. And so when you put the, uh, it kind of smooths out with the other paint when you put on the uh, mat over everything. Um, except that little thing in the middle. I, you can, I can hand paint the exhaust ports at some point if I want to, but I don't think it's necessary with all the swatches I'm going to be using. If I have to, all of them might. Thanks for watching.